Spring came late to Minnesota this year, the land of 10,000 lakes still frozen long past usual. But in the pleasant town of Prior Lake, April marked a year since the Barnes family's lives changed yeah. forever. Before all this hit, what was your family life like? Four kids, two dogs. Lots of love, lots of laughs, lots of giggles. We used to do truth or dare when we were like four years old. But we never did that. 11-year-old Parker, the oldest, in the top bunk. My nickname that my mom and dad call me is um, Lead Dog. A rambunctious, outgoing boy. Until midway through fourth grade, Parker started acting differently. Odd tics, strange moodiness. You right, Parker? <laughs> Deep breath. Deep breath, Parker. But then, something much worse. You're in control, honey. Okay, okay. It's hard to watch. You're in control, Parker. Look at mom. Harder still when you consider that Natalie and Brian were watching their son suffer with seizures like these for months. Are you there? Look at mom. have some anti-nuclear antibodies. Look at mom. Where's mom at? You see her? Heart-wrenching and without warning. It's okay, Parker. We got you, honey. We got you. I got you. I'm with you all the way, buddy. I'm with you. I'm right here. I would liken it mostly to an abduction. Something came in the window and stole our child and left behind this shell. Our kid is gone, like gone. Die, die, Parker! Die, die, Parker! I was the first one to see it. But Parker's brother Stetson witnessed one of the worst episodes one day while heading up the stairs to the bathroom. He ran into Parker brandishing a kitchen knife. Dad, Mom, he's going to stab himself. And I ran up into the bathroom, and there he stood with a knife in his hand. Bawling uncontrollably. And just bawling and in, like, a trance well uncontrollably. Die. And I just grabbed the knife out, and I'm just hugging him. That day with the knife, did you want to hurt yourself? I don't worry, really no. It's as if you can't even recognize your own child, and yet no doctor is able to give you answers. Their recommendation was, you know, you need, I think he needs to be evaluated by a psychiatrist. It's a psychiatric condition. Yeah. Just like the Bears, the Barnes were dumbstruck to be checking their child into a psychiatric hospital. Oh, that was a nightmare. That was a nightmare? That was like a prison for children. Because all the children there didn't want to see their families because they were also like angry and mean or something. But while Parker was being evaluated, suddenly, a curious coincidence. A doctor was struck when she learned that when Parker's symptoms first began all those months ago, he had just been diagnosed with something else. Strep throat. It was a eureka moment. And she said he might have something called pandas. And we're like, pandas? Parents get the answer, pandas. And their reaction is, what? <laughs> no. Pandas? Right. If you've never heard of pandas, you're hardly alone. In fact, no one had heard of it before this woman, Dr. Susan Sweeto of the National Institute of Mental Health, first identified it 20 years ago. I just study children and try and understand what's wrong with them and how to help them. While it conjures up images of the cute and cuddly bears, pandas is actually an acronym. Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Strep. What is pandas? In its simplest form, the wrong strep in the wrong kid impacts the brain and gives rise to behavioral symptoms. How? Sweeto says normally when children get strep, their immune systems create antibodies to fight the infection. But with certain kids, the immune system malfunctions. Those antibodies start attacking healthy cells. And even worse, they sneak across what's called the blood-brain barrier. And it's designed to protect the brain. It's designed to protect the brain. We now know that that blood-brain barrier can become leaky. It's as if the antibodies are attacking the brain. In a way, yes. 
And once the brain is invaded, Suido says, that's when children can very rapidly exhibit a wide range of psychiatric and neurological problems, some as severe as the kind both Parker and Alexia have. So traditional onset OCD is gradual, comes over a period of days or weeks. Panda's OCD comes on overnight. A medical lightning strike. Lightning strike, that's right. The only thing that I was kept questioning is, but why did this suddenly come on? You know, wouldn't I have seen signs? And what about that strap? Her research and, you know, striving to figure it out really, really paid off. Eventually, a neuropsychologist made a connection between the strep and immediate onset of symptoms that made sense to the Bear family. Then she was like, okay, have you ever heard of pandas? Is it fair to say you were relieved? Uh, definitely relieved to have, you know, some sort of diagnosis that made sense. And I'm like, thinking, great, good, pandas. Whatever pandas whatever. is. Okay, is there cute a little... syrup for that? Or yeah, right, you, exactly. What do you do, yeah. you know? And they're going to have the right thing to the anti-panda pill. And Whatever that is, it'll be gone and we'll be down the road. Yeah. Get our kid back. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.